Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again. Today we are going to talk about Autoloader which is a new offering from Databricks. Autoloader is going to be a game changer for uh, for the scenarios where you have to incrementally load data from the cloud file. So look at the uh, definition given by Databricks for this. So it says Autoloader allows Databricks users to incrementally ingest data into Delta Lake from a variety of data sources. So Autoloader is an optimized cloud file source for Apache Spark that loads data continuously and efficiently from cloud storage as new data arrives. So here if you look at the, on the use case here, it's not new. There has been many uh, existing scenarios and even diff different tools which can achieve this. So now we are going to talk about how it is different. Can this beat the existing solution? How it fares? What are the advantages and disadvantages with this? So with this, we'll move on to our uh, scenario, how we are actually handling this scenario as of now. If you already have some system built for this kind of scenario, you might be knowing this. So here we are talking about a traditional ETL solution, which you might have already set up or usually we set up. Uh, what we do is we have we create ETL tool, which actually looks for files in a source system and processes right now in this scenario we have multiple csv files which is in the source system as and when it arrives you either set up a, a stream processing or the batch processing where you look for now there are uh, important uh, parameters which you need to look, look forward here like you need to only read the new files you don't want to miss the new files right you don't want to miss the new files but you don't want to process the existing files as well it has to trigger immediately and it should be repeatable pattern right you don't have you want to configure it again and again and it should be fast over large directories many times it happens that it works for a small number of files but when the number of files increases it becomes tedious or it does not perform up to the mark so we'll see how this uh, uh, solution works here in this scenario so we'll talk about three different uh, uh, existing patterns which can uh, work so first pattern we already talked about which is a traditional way of uh, handling the incremental data where you perform your own metadata you, you configure your metadata and you have all the things set up right there are one more uh, solution available which is from the spark which is spark file streaming that also does a very much similar thing you configure your source files or the source directory in, in fact and as and when the new file arrives it actually can pick up now what what is the harm with this or wh why should i not go with this solution the reason for that is as the number of file grows it has to keep on monitoring it has to compare the file which it has already processed so when the number of files goes beyond a limit when you have when you deal with millions of files it is not that optimal solution now look at for other solution what is the third solution you can actually build a custom solution using the logic app where you are monitoring your blob storage and you are kicking off some azure function that azure function in turn will go and kick off your databricks job apis right so that is something which you can custom build but now what happens with all these three uh, possible solution there are some pros and cons right what it is good at what it is bad at. so what autoloader has done basically is that it has taken all the good thing from all three solution and it has put it together so it essentially autoloader combines our three approaches it is storing the metadata it is working on the structure streaming and it's also using cloud native components right so we it's like kind of a a win-win situation where you are getting all the benefits from all the three approaches now look at the um, you know, look at what happens behind the scene how autoloader achieves this right so behind the scene what it does is it actually leverages your uh, um, event grid subscription and the queue so what it has uh, it will do behind the scene is it will set up a queuing system with the subscription as in when a new file arrives in your storage which you have configured it is actually going to create a queue or it, it will put a um, it will put that file into the queue which can be actually read by your uh, autoloader or databricks file system so instead of you doing all this configuration databricks will do all these things for you that's how it is useful 
Another benefit with this is it does not have to scan all the files within your directory. It does not have to compare it. It knows exactly which new file has come and which new file it has to process. So that's how it is actually optimizing it. Now you see uh, before you jump into the demo, we have to do some pre-work. You have to have one service principle which has three very important uh, uh, roles assigned to it without this it will not work and this is very very important unless you do this you you should not start your uh, solution so make sure that you have a service principle which has these three accesses contributor storage queue data contributor uh, event grid event subscription contributor now you know why do you need all this thing because uh, databricks is going to set up a queue and uh, event grid subscription on your behalf so unless it has those roles assigned to it, it won't be able to do it. So if you try to achieve, uh, to try to uh, put your solution without doing this, you are going to get those errors. And again, you have to come back and do it. So better you do it all these things and make sure that you have seen the documentation based on your Databricks runtime because it might differ from runtime version. If it's 8.1 or above, then all these things are um, needed. So if you are still working on a Databricks runtime version below 8.1, you also have to configure connection stream. So for this demo purpose, we have used a Databricks runtime which is above 8.1. So we are not actually listing out the connection stream. So let's jump into our uh, Azure portal and see. Um, so what I'll show is uh, I have a storage account which is already configured. Uh, at this moment, I have made two different uh, um, folders. One is for source and one is for destination. But before I go, I'll show you the events, which is the most important thing here. Um, let let it load. Yeah, you can see here there is nothing. It's all empty. Um, but just after we configure our Databricks, you will notice that one subscription will be automatically created by Databricks. As if you can correlate to this. Uh, we have configured your uh, service principle with those roles right now i can show you my source and uh, destination folder this is my autoloader source which is going to be uh, used as a source file uh, as soon as we upload file here it has to get copied to destination yeah. now before we move forward this is what my configuration says my service principle says p autoloader and you can see i have already configured three roles which is most important thing here so don't forget to do this now let's move on and see now let's jump into our databricks notebook and see what we have here we are going to perform everything in three different cells only now you can see that my first cell okay on my first cell i have configured my source directory with schema because we have to pass on the schema what i'm doing is i'm reading a file from a source and creating a schema that schema is an input for your uh, setup you can create it in different way as well uh, but this is how i have done it now this is schema variable which you can see in the first cell that has been passed on in the second cell here so let's try to execute this one and see okay looks like my cluster is stopped so what i'll do is behind the scene i will start my cluster let's quickly see the all the configuration we needed and this is very important here your uh, uh, format your stream format is going to be cloud file your uh, file format whichever you have used it i'm using csv files i've given csv then you have to configure your tenant id client id and client secret based on your service principle then your resource group name subscription id and you you can notice of eighth one which is use notification true right so this is the notification mode we are using here this is all configuration you need and uh, uh, there are some doc documentation where some of the things are missing because of which i had to struggle a lot but yeah if you have all these things put together it should work for you now this is my setup uh, uh, output directory here i am my output is in the delta format and i have given auto loader um, auto loader target as a destination but yeah the second most point important point here is a checkpoint the checkpoint folder has to be set up where uh, Databricks actually stores all the metadata and the auditing of this uh, streaming 
what all files are already processed what all files are yet to be processed so all the uh, internal files has uh, will be in the checkpoint directory now let's go ahead and try to execute okay my cluster is stopped so i'll start it and pause the video until it uh, comes back let me start yeah. it started now let me run again okay so i am doing what i'm doing is i'm reading the schema from my file right but i had shown you that my uh, my source was empty so what i did is i uploaded one file just to get the schema of it now i'm executing my first one then let me print the schema as well yeah and schema is good yeah i can see year and month there are only two columns for demo purpose now let me execute this third one yeah this is done now the four, fourth one is the most critical one whenever uh, you have some or other problem it is going to occur here so i'm keeping my fingers crossed let's see running we have to give a couple of seconds or maybe half a minute for it to initialize everything and check everything if everything is good it's running it's still running so if it is successfully started you would see a different kind of symbol okay one job is running let me see no but it has still not uh, finished yep some more waiting so let me see yep. by that time yeah i can show you let's see here it has created a um, even get subscription we, we had shown you in the beginning that it was empty right and there was nothing now the subscription is created loops there is some issue some error let's see okay if you look at this it says 9.csv is missing because i was doing some um, pre-work before the demo i i did a cleanup and by that time it had not picked it so probably what i'll have to do is i'll have to go back and upload the this file 9.csv again and i'll try to rerun it okay i have done that okay now i have uploaded uploaded 9.csv and again retriggered it so this time okay you can see here these files are created because when there was a lag um, one file was uploaded but it was not copied so it has picked up that one also now uh, before the demo starts now we already have a file which was uploaded right now we have a six rows in the destination so what i'll do is uh, i'll upload one more file for this demo at this time now you can see um, because our jobs are running successfully the graphs are coming as of now there is uh, nothing to process now let's go ahead and upload one file and make sure the file has a exactly same schema if you upload with a different schema file it might fail so i'm uploading 12.csv in my source folder and the expectation is that this should get uh, replicated in my target and you should also see a spike here because um, it should it will put the file in the queue right nothing okay let's go back here let's see here okay it is yet to see the file there is a bit of lag here let me refresh no okay i think i'll have to go into this Yep, nothing here as of now strange uh, let me refresh go back okay yeah now you can see there is one more file is already copied right earlier we had five now we have six that means it has picked up i should see the spike here i don't know why it is not let's try to find out number of rows in the delta table now it should have increased it should become 12 because now we have processed two file one it was already there and now we have added a new one I'll wait for yeah yeah okay now we can see here see the spike so it, it has find out that there is a new file upload and yeah here also you can see right now we can confirm that so with that uh, we have seen that how quickly and how easily you can configure your incremental data load from a cloud file 
so there, there can be some uh, issues when you are configuring in case you face some problem please uh, comment please give a comment and you can raise a query in, in our video and if you like our video please like it subscribe it and share it thanks thank you for watching subscribe our channel